Ocarina of Time Indigo is the most promising demo I have played in 3 billion years. It's a ROM hack of Ocarina of Time that promises a huge, sprawling adventure. In its current state, it can be beaten in like 2-ish hours, but you gotta understand, for ROM hack demo standards, that's as long as The Witcher 3, but without the endless dialogue trees. Judging from what's already here and some of the contextual and environmental cues, the full game, if and when it does get finished, will likely be very, very big. According to one of the signposts at the beginning, the main purpose of the demo is to decide whether or not the project is worth pursuing, claiming that it's an experimental hack with a lot of different ideas and will only be continued if people like it and will be discontinued if they don't. If the developer is watching this, I'm gonna make a long story short and save you some time. I really love what I played so far, so for what my input is worth, please continue working on this. Otherwise, I'm gonna keep the long story long and show you all the wonders of Indigo. It's like blue, but slightly different. Now, the premise of this game is not fully apparent yet, other than the fact that it probably takes place after Majora's Mask, since you're traveling with Tail, the fairy, and you're an adult wearing desaturated adult clothes. The opening area looks vaguely similar to the mountain area north of Clocktown, but when you leave, you end up in an area that looks similar to Hyrule Field, but after exploring for a little bit, it's clear that this is not the same place. There are a lot of pathways accompanied by somebody talking about what's beyond the path, supposedly. Of course, most of these areas are not part of the demo and you can't go through them, but one area is Kokiri Forest, or at least some version of Kokiri Forest, the Kokiri Meadow, if you will. I think the the idea is that this is supposed to be the Termina Dimensions equivalent of Hyrule. Nobody seems to know you, and Tail, I think, at some point, refers to the Deku Tree as our Deku Tree. Speaking of which, the only two dungeons that are playable so far are the new Great Deku Tree and what's known as the Skyloft Temple, I think, which is quite different from the Twilight Princess version. But thankfully, there aren't any of these things, like what the hell is that? Now let's talk gameplay. You know I love gameplay. In addition to new worlds and narratives, the game is full of brand new custom items and mechanics as well, and it's this detail that makes this hack really stand out. There have been several ROM hacks of Ocarina of Time already, but only a handful of them include new items and mechanics. It's the kind of thing that puts you up a couple of tiers by default. So what are the new items? Well, there's the Rock's Feather that lets you jump on command, so Link can finally stop being a dumbass like Toad was saying way back on December 1st. You also got the Bomb Arrows, which are exactly what they sound like. Shoot an explosion from 300 miles away. It's amazing. And it also makes this boss fight extremely easy. I was spinning my wheels shooting it with bomb shoes until I realized I could just spam bomb arrows. If the developer is watching this, please don't patch this out. I love doing this. It feels amazing. There are also bombs that can be used underwater and bomb shoes that can be remotely detonated at a certain time by pressing B. That is one of the biggest saving graces of this game. I always hated lining up that thing super precisely and praying to Super Santa Jeebus the second that it blows up at the right time and place. I just got done playing Ocarina of Time very recently and doing so has exposed me to a lot of the more frustrating aspects of the game. Tech speed, now that's a real pain in the ass, or pushing the blocks, which takes an eternity. Then of course there's all the swapping item slots and the stupid iron boots that you have to pause to take on and off. It's a minor gripe until you reach the water temple and you have to do it 300 times in a single minute. Indigo fixes all of these problems, movement speed is far greater, at least with nothing equipped. Text displays faster, block pushing is faster, and the iron boots are now an item that you can just equip and dequip on the fly with C. But the best feature of all is definitely the ability to have two sets of C button items that you can swap between during gameplay by pressing down on the D-pad. It cuts down on a lot of the plentiful tedium that comes with taking things on and off in the pause menu every three seconds. So right off the bat, most of the problems with the base game have been rectified. This is a very strong place to start from. Even though the story is very limited in its current state, there are some really neat details. I remember reaching the Kokiri Meadow and the game actually did something that truly surprised me. This girl at the entrance to the maze told me there's a spirit that guards the forest and that if I run into her, I should just leave her alone. 
So I reach the end of the maze to get the sword, and then I get ambushed by a small Stalfos, presumably the spirit she was talking about. And if Ocarina of Time is any indication, this was probably a human being who turned into a Stalfos after becoming one with the forest. Since I was told to leave her alone, naturally I stabbed her to death, at which point the sky just went pitch black, and then when I got to the village, everyone was pissed off at me for doing that. Even the shopkeeper refused to sell me most of the items, and the few items that were available were marked up very heavily. Speaking of surprises, check out this shit. <laughs> yeah, so uh, the game has custom redeads that can run really fast and drain your health at 3 billion gallons per second. I think for me though, the best thing about this hack is the puzzles. I've watched some of the developer commentary, which yeah, the developer actually did a full commentated playthrough of the game, and supposedly, many people who played it got stuck on a few of these puzzles. There was some question that the puzzles were too obtuse, but I think in my case, I got stuck maybe once or twice only because I was being a dumbass. I think people don't appreciate the intricacy of the original game's puzzles because we've all played it so many times that it no longer registers to us as challenging. Not even the Water Temple phases me anymore. Indigo's puzzles are kind of like the midway point between the original and Master Quest. You might get stuck, but once you figure it out, you're gonna feel really stupid. Because the game has all these new items and mechanics that aren't in the original game, you really have to get acquainted with them and really get into the mindset of, Hey, I have bomb arrows. I'm unstoppable. If there's one thing that is a little lacking in this game which could definitely change by release, it would be the music. Most of it is unchanged from the original, but there is a new Hyrule Field theme that sounds pretty good. Indigo is a dramatic step up in terms of polish and gameplay. It not only cuts down on some of the more frustrating aspects of the game that it's based on, but it also adds a lot to it, fundamentally expanding the scope of what it can do. It is a very ambitious, very promising demo, and I hope that one day it does get finished. And if you agree, hop on over to the developer's comment section and drop a couple of Christmas carols in the chat. Do it for me. Ho ho ho! Thank you for watching this video, and don't forget to drop on by tomorrow. Now just like usual, I'm not going to tell you what's going on tomorrow, it's a secret. But I think you'll find that it's very golden. And what could be more Christmassy than gold? Maybe silver? Silver and gold, hmm yes, everybody wishes for that. But it's just gold tomorrow, ho oh. ho.